Ooh, so much pretty fabric in so little time. I just want to roll naked in my fabric pile. Well, maybe that's taking it too far. Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly vlog for December the 27th, 2021. And that'll be the last time I'll be saying the year 2021, because by the time I do this next vlog, it'll be 2022. Yeah, so New Year's is coming. Okay, and it is vlog number 246, and it's the 658th day of COVID. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump right into what I've been working on. And even though it's been Christmas, I've still been sewing. A day without sewing is a day without sunshine. No, I leave that for Amazon. That's right. A day without Amazon is a day without sunshine. But anyways, I've been sewing. So let me just show you what I have been working on. And here it is. And this is known as a New York beauty. Now, this is something I've wanted to make for quite a while, but... I made this one in an unconventional way. Usually when you make a New York beauty, it is a form of what they call paper piecing, foundation paper piecing. You have your pattern all drawn out on paper that you can easily tear away from your stitching, and you just lay pieces of fabric over in a certain order over each one of these pieces and sew them down. And that guarantees that all of your shapes and everything and your points, especially on something like a New York Beauty where there's a lot of points, are very, um, you know, neat, tidy, exact. So I didn't do it that way. I found a file, I bought a file from OESD, which is my online store for buying embroidery files. Um, and I found this one uh, a couple of weeks ago or so, well, actually, maybe a month or so ago, uh, for making a New York Beauty. Now, what the files do is it gives you, each one creates one of these little squares, and there are three different designs. And I know it's probably not that visible but in the video, but let me pull it up here so you can get a better look. So you see, it also does the quilting in around here. So there is one design on this centerpiece. And here's another design in here and a third design down here. And I decided on how I was going to lay out the pieces and sew them together because there are many ways you can do this. It's, it's very versatile and you get, get some really cool looks by just the way you take the individual blocks, which is like right in here, that's one block, and arranging them in different manners. I did it this way. This is not huge. This is only about 32 inches by square. And I have a perfect place for it. And it's on the door that leads into my rec room from my sewing room. Uh, and I've already got the hooks and everything up there because there is a uh, Christmas banner hanging there at the moment. So when the Christmas banner comes down, this is going to go up and that's going to be the new home for this piece. I think it turned out really well. Um, I love the colors in it. It's all batiks. Um, and they're randomly selected. Most of this came from uh, my scrap pile. Um, I added the two color border around it and uh, I've just got it. I finished layering it yesterday and quilting it. Now, when I say quilting it, this is because it's a wall hanging and because of the way that I made it on the embroidery machine, um, it's not quilted in the traditional way. Um, in other words, the quilting doesn't go all the way through to the backing because this was done before the backing went on. Now there are ways you could put this together. I could have done what they call quilt as you go, but I hate doing quilt as you go. Um, and because this is going to be a wall hanging, I didn't worry about that. But what I did have to do is I had to secure the layers. There is batting and there is backing on this. And I just did stitch in the ditch and I basically just went down and around each one of the squares in a very light colored thread. And you can't even see that thread and that's okay because I didn't want you to really see it, but it secures the layers. So all I have left to do today is make my binding and put it all the way around it and it is done. And I'm really happy with this. Now you might say, well, did that take a long time? Yeah, it did, but that's okay. Um, actually. 
once you got going at it, it didn't take that long. It took maybe half an hour or so for each um, block. And in total, there are 16 blocks in this quilt. Uh, so yeah, it did take some time, but I think the end result was worth it. So yeah, I've been working on that. And I'm very pleased with how that turned out. So that takes me to the YouTube channel of the week. And this is a really weird channel. Um, well, actually, the content of it is a little bit weird. It's fascinating. You can go right down the rabbit hole with this particular YouTube channel. And uh, it's very entertaining as well as yeah, somewhat educational. So here's my review of that. The YouTube channel of the week is called Cube Hub. And I came across this by accident, but it's very, very, um, well, it's addictive because it has an awful lot of videos on here about strange events that people experience or things you've never seen before. For example, if you look on the screen, 30 random acts of kindness that will restore your faith in humanity. Um, 40 never seen before moments in sports. Luckiest people ever caught on camera. Weirdest things ever caught on security. I mean, just the titles alone are kind of enticing. And yes, they are clickbait to a certain extent, but these are actually clips from real life of things that you don't see every day. So basically, if you want something that is mindless, entertaining, somewhat thought provoking, then this might be the YouTube channel for you. Cube Hub zero one so you'll find the link for that as always in the show notes below you're also going to find a link for all the videos that uh, i've created in the past week there's stephen and walter live where we talked a lot about christmas and how everybody uh got along uh, again another year where christmas is not like it has been of the past i'm afraid we've started new traditions and not because we wanted to but you know maybe next year everything will be more normal again we can only hope can't we um so there is a link for the latest ish uh edition of the idiot quilter and of uh, the idiot quilter presents musings yes i'm back to presenting my little rants on that because i don't have any interviews so again i put out the appeal let me interview you all the information about that's in the show notes and on so chatty this week walter and i both picked six items out of our uh tool bin and uh talked about why these would make great stocking stuffers i know it's a little late for christmas but maybe for next year um okay so moving right along oh you'll also find a link for craft and chat it's advanced notice Craft and Chat is always the first Wednesday of every month. So the first Wednesday of January is January the 5th. So it's coming up really quickly. It's a week from now, basically, of at the time of recording this. So it's January the 5th, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know the drill. Zoom link is there. All are welcome. Bring whatever you're working on. It doesn't matter what it is. And we have a good time. So, yeah. Maybe we'll get some more people coming out to it. I mean, I've got a nice little core of people right now that I call friends uh, through Craft and Chat. And you know who you are. And I appreciate it very much. And I have a really good time. And I love seeing you every month. Um, and yeah, we're a happy little group. And we're more than willing to have other people join us as well. So think about it if you're free. Okay. So that takes me to what's pissing me off this week. Well, I'm really not pissed off. I go through this every year. The Christmas blues. And I think I'm not the only person. It's the the aftermath of Christmas, right? You've spent the whole month of December, some people start sooner, getting all fired up about Christmas. Even in this time of a pandemic, we still were getting ourselves fired up about Christmas. Yes, Christmas this year, as last year, was very different, I'm sure, for most people. But nevertheless... We still got excited about it, didn't we? And it's all the anticipation. You know, the anticipation of, well, it used to be the anticipation of seeing people, but you can still have that anticipation if you do a Zoom or whatever. The anticipation of gifts, of getting and giving, 
I really get excited about giving things away because I, I'm really excited about the reaction I get from people. And I'll make no bones about it. I'm an egotist. I love hearing nice things from people when I give them things, you know. So maybe it's stroking my ego. And in fact, last week's musings uh, on uh, The Idiot Quilter Presents was sort of about all of that. And if we're really honest with ourselves, don't we get a real warm, fuzzy feeling when we give something to somebody and they're genuinely uh, very happy to receive it? I mean, giving is better than getting. I really think so. But getting's not bad either. And later on in today's vlog, I'm going to show you what Santa, a.k.a. Walter, uh, gave me. And he just blew my socks off with this year's gifts. And you'll see why shortly. But you've got all of that. And then, of course, on Christmas Day and the special foods and everything like that, it's just a wonderful time. And then, bang, it's over. And it's Boxing Day. And here in Canada, anyways, it's Boxing Day. And then you have this lull between Christmas and New Year's. Now, for some people, the anticipation, again, starts up again because, you know, New Year's is coming, New Year's parties, uh, more food, meeting up with friends and everything like that. Well, that was in the old days and pre-COVID days, of course. But there's still a little bit of anticipation there, too. But for me... Because we don't really do a lot for New Year's. We haven't in quite a few years, regardless of the pandemic. It's just a letdown. Just inside, I get this, suddenly I crash. And I think start thinking about, ooh, I got to clean up the mess. Got to put away all the Halloween, Halloween decor. Halloween, whoa, where am I going? Yeah, that's state of mind. The Christmas decorations all have to be put away and that's kind of sad because when you get all the christmas decorations down your house looks bare doesn't it it's like you can go in and shout in any room and there'll be an echo there's nothing to block it it's yeah and you know everybody's turning off their outdoor lights and things in another few weeks although there are those that leave them up all year round <laughs> yeah we aren't going to talk about those people and it's just there's nothing to look forward to is what it feels like now so I have a few days of that, a few days of what are actually a form of depression, I suppose, the blues, the after Christmas blues. So what do you do about that? Nothing. Well, I don't. It goes away. It should go away. But I know for some people it doesn't go away. It just contributes to their mental state of health. For, for many, Christmas, and we've talked about this before, is not a happy time of the year. Um, and it just is even more compounded when we get back to normal. Now, here in Canada, where I live, the other thing you have to look forward to is snow. Now, there are many parts of Canada right now that are already buried in snow. I live in a, the southernmost part, pretty much, of Canada, southern Ontario. And as I like to refer to it, well, that's basically the Florida of Canada. Because we... We're on a lake, one of the Great Lakes. That affects our climate. We're a little warmer. We're not really, we're just at the edge of what they call the snow belt. And so we can have grass. We can have greenery. It'll be cold, but we can have greenery, no snow. And 20 miles north of us, they can be buried under a foot of it. Um, so we always have that to look forward to because it is going to come. We are going to have snow. That is inevitable. And January is the month when we get the most. January and February are really our snowy months here where I live. And you don't know what to expect from one day to the next. You could have snow one day. You could have rain the next. And I hate that in the winter. I hate rain in the winter. I really, quite frankly, prefer the snow, even though you have to shovel it. And when I say we, I mean Walter. Um, <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, you know, you got to drive in it and then you get a few days where it's a little warmer. It starts to melt and then it becomes slush and slush is just dirty snow. It's just <clears throat> depressing. And it doesn't take us very long to get so tired of winter that we're waiting for spring. But spring takes forever to get here. And right now, I had a couple of people on yesterday 
from Australia, and they're enjoying summer. And you know, I said to them, I wish I was there. Um, because, well, you know, I love Australia. When is it that I don't say I love Australia? I say it all the time, but I do. And right now, this time of the year, I love it even more. Because they're going to, into, well, they're into summer. And in fact, one of the people on there who lives in Australia said it was 27 degrees C yesterday. With it going up to 40 degrees C this week. Yeah, here's the reverse. It's just put a minus number in front of, of those numbers I just said. But nevertheless, back to Christmas blues or after Christmas blues. Yeah, so there's just this feeling that there's nothing coming, nothing happening. Well, there is. There are all these things coming up. And the best thing I can do for myself to keep myself from feeling a little bit depressed is to do some things that are new. The one thing about after Christmas and especially after New Year's is the idea, you know, there's a renewal fear uh, feeling at that point where, you know, you're looking around your house and going, I really need to clean up those kind of things or I need to, need to do some reorganization. And so that's what I start to do. And that gets me out of my depression. I feel like I've accomplished something like, for example, today, after I'm finished this, I'm going to find the New York Beauty Quilt. So that'll be one thing off my list. I have a couple of things I want to get started on my 3D printers. Been having a little problem lately with that. I'm going to talk about that in the 3D corner. Um, and I've got on my list, because I make lists of things I want to do, um, I need to start reorganizing my fabric. And in a, mo a couple of minutes, you're going to find out exactly why I need to do that. So that usually gets me out of that state. So I guess what I'm saying is if you suffer from after Christmas blues as well, I think the best thing you can do is get busy. Do something. It's too easy to lay down on the couch, eat your Christmas bonbons and watch old Christmas movies or whatever's on Netflix um, and do nothing. And I think that just contributes to your overall state of mind, to your your depressed feelings. You got to get in there and get to work. Um, if we were in pre-COVID times, retail therapy is really good at this point in the year too. Uh, but you can still have that too as well, although do do it with caution. Um, you know, there's lots of, the internet's open. You can go shopping. And I have to hold myself back because for some reason after spending, you know, all kinds of money on gifts and things at Christmas time. I'm in the mood to spend more money. Don't ask me why. It's just something that happens to me. Um, I don't recommend that as a cure for the Christmas after Christmas blues because you're going to have more blues when you see the bills come through. But anyways, bottom line is if you're feeling a little depressed now, the anticipation of Christmas is over. Um, and if you're like me, you don't do a heck of a lot for New Year's, then do something. It'll get your mind off it. Uh, it'll inspire you. You'll feel good that you've accomplished something. And I think that's the best way to handle the after Christmas blues. At least that's what I'm going to do. So we'll see how that works. Okay, so moving on. Let's talk about what Santa brought me for Christmas, aka Walter. He outdid himself this year. And I've got pictures to prove it. So I'm just going to throw those up here as soon as I find them. Uh, just give me a second to get myself organized. And here we go. Okay, so switch this over. So, fabric. He bought me fabric. Lots and lots of fabric. He just went to town. And he went online to buy this. Now, this is only one part of the fabric he bought me, as you can see. He bought a lot of the fabric from Missouri Star Quilt Company and from the Fat Quarter Shop. Both are American companies. You've heard me talk about them before. And I've talked about them more extensively on the Idiot Quilter series. Um... But he got some good deals, he said, and they had a great selection. Better selection than I can get at most of the stores that uh, are online for Canada, especially in when it comes to pre-cuts, I have found. 
So he bought me all of these that you see up here on the screen. These are fat quarters. One, two, three, four, five, five. Yeah, five packages of these different lines of fabric. And I'm going to talk about these a little bit more extensively on the Idiot Quilter if you're interested into as to what each of these lines are. He bought me fat quarter bundles, big fat quarter bundles. He bought me jelly rolls. And this is a strip pack over here. And these two, because he bought so much, both companies he dealt with sent freebies and he gave them to me. So some charm packs, a couple of those. But wait, there's more. Okay, different shot angle. I couldn't get it all in one picture. These big bundles right here are actually what's called wide back backing fabrics. I use them on the back of my quilts. Uh, they're 108 inches by three yards, three meters, three yards. Actually, all this was in yardage because it was American. Um, so one package of these will do a large queen size quilt, basically. And he got me six, six of these. Now, wide back fabric can be expensive, but he said at Missouri Star Quilt, he got a really great deal. I think it was something like $12. It worked out to $12 a yard. And that's really good. Really good. Okay. As a price. So I got all of those. But wait, there's more. And this one blew my mind completely. I was already blown away. And you see, Walter had a strategy. He had all of these in various Christmas bags. But he told me which ones to open, what order to open them in. And he saved this one for last, and I know why. This is a complete set of the poured color line. Now, I had just, a few days before that, actually stumbled across this um, on another online site. And I thought, ooh, I haven't seen this line before, and that is really, really pretty. But I didn't order any at the time. Well, glad I didn't, because he bought it for me. The complete collection. Now, these are fat quarters. And someone asked me yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live, what is a fat quarter? Fat quarter is generally a piece of fabric cut from the bolt of fabric that measures 18 inches by 21 or 22 inches. Um, I love fat quarters. Reason being is there's so many things you can do with fat quarters. And they're easier to, you know, when you have to cut fabric, they're easy to manipulate. Uh, that size but this box is so pretty there are 80 80 count them 80 fat quarters in here and it's the complete collection of all of these colors so there are duplicates as you can see in here which is great and it looks like there may be four or close to four of e four fat fat quarters of each of the colors and that would work out to about what two meters one meter let's see 21 18 inches 18 is 30 yeah two meters of fabric of each of those so i have to go through all of my patterns and i've got to find patterns that are worthy of all the fabrics that walter bought me so i've already made a list of the projects i want to do this year so i'm going to take a look at that list see if if any of these fabrics will work in those and if not, I'll just go through my uh, pattern stack um, or online and I am going to find patterns that are worthy of these fabrics. I mean, I'm just, I just want to roll in these fabrics. I love fabric, as you know, and these colors ah, just are blowing my mind away. So, yeah, I was thrilled. Yeah, I was thrilled. And this is just going to contribute to my uh, after Christmas blues <laughs> because I want more. Not really. But I've got to find spaces for these. Right now, I've been throwing them up on my shelves that you can see behind me. Uh, but the shelves are getting a little junky looking. So I got to go through my fabric drawers. And that's one of the things on my list for today. And see where I can put these, where I can see what I have very easily. And yeah. It's a happy problem to have because I love organizing my fabrics. I really do. I was the same way when I was a scrapbooker with paper. So, yeah, this is just that obsession translated into fabric. 
Okay, so that was my gifts from Santa. Now, if you want to know what I got uh, Walter for Christmas, because, yeah, I think he was thrilled with what I got him too. It's all on Stephen and Walter Live. We, we discussed it in more detail. So don't feel that, uh, you know, this was a one-way street. It wasn't. Okay, so what else is new? Um, I did get, actually, just before Christmas, I got some uh, fabric from uh, Ultimate Sewing. Uh, I They had a sale on, uh, just before Christmas, on all their Christmas fabric. I think it was 35% off. And so I thought, well, I'll stock up for next year, because you know how I love Christmas fabric. And actually, I have a pattern for a, a Christmas quilt that I wish I had seen back a couple of months ago because I would have made it for this Christmas but um yeah I didn't but that doesn't mean I can't work on it now you know whatever but I bought these fabrics let me just switch over here so you can see it and uh I think I bought two meters of each yeah I did buy two meters of each because that's usually what I I do with fabric and uh, one of them is a panel that one the second one from the right end there uh that is a panel um and with and panels you know i've come to to really love panels because if you want to make a quick gift quilt a panel is the way to go um but these will be they're in my stash for christmas uh, next year and uh yeah so that's one thing other thing new the other thing that i got and let's see if i can find this here um let's go out and it's in here somewhere okay just give me a second i'm just going to switch back around hi i'm back um let's see where is that picture oh yeah here it is and i'll just get that pulled up for us okay so this is a ruler from Martelli. Now, I think I discussed Martelli before, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more detail on the Idiot Quilter. Um, but this is basically so you can cut strips. But it's a very unique system. Uh, this ruler is built so it once it's on your fabric, it will not move. It has a great uh, non-slip backing to it. And these slots are very, very exact. It doesn't look well you can't see through this ruler it's not a clear ruler but it is strictly made for cutting strips of various sizes now i do have another ruler that i use all the time for that but i thought i'd give this one a try and i have tried it and it is great it is really great but it was hell getting it because martelli is in florida and on the idiot quilter tomorrow i'm going to discuss that in a little bit more detail but for now let me tell you that this is it was worth the wait uh, to get it because, yeah, it does an excellent job and I'm thrilled that I have it. So those are all the new things that I have bought. And uh, so that takes me to the 3D corner. What things have been I've been making? Well, it's kind of like all about gnomes here. Um, yeah. Uh, you know I have an obsession with gnomes and I'm just switching over to show you something this is a mess yeah those are gnomes not good gnomes I bought some new filament from a company I've never dealt with before and I needed some more rainbow fill filament because I love the rainbow filament this thing is a mess now, I've played with this filament a little bit more, changed settings, and I still do not get good results. So I have written a very negative review about this filament on Amazon. And I've also found the company. They're in China. Of course they are. And I have written to them about this as well. And I'll just see what I get back from them, what kind of reply. I'm anticipating I will not hear anything from them. Um, this filament was not particularly cheap. It was about the average price that I pay for filament, but just a mess, just a mess. And as I said, I have tried different things and have had no better results. So this one now says it's bad filament on the side of it. And it sits in my uh, place of um, shame. 
ask for filaments and I will never order from this particular company again. So, yeah, but I have been doing some other things as well. Um, I made, uh, let's see, I don't know if I got a picture of it here. Uh, okay, just give me a second to organize my pictures. Okay, so in my continued obsession with gnomes, I did make some gnomes out of some other new uh, filament that I bought. And here they are. Now, the one that turned out the best was the one in the blue. But these other ones, that one was made again from that rainbow filament I just talked about and really not getting better results. I got better results with this color and this color, but they were both from a three pack that I bought, again, from another company that I've never, ever dealt with before. And I'm not particularly sold on the quality of their filament either. So I guess the lesson here is stay with what you know, stick with the companies that you have good results with. Now, I was printing some things yesterday, and they were long prints, and I was using this new filament as well, and for some reason, they failed as well. So, I'm a little worried about that, because I'm thinking, is this a problem with my printer, or is this a problem with the filament? So, I'm going to do some more experiments today, and check that out. What really is brown and nine nose, I guess, is the fact that... um. These weren't particularly cheap, and I'm doing what their suggested settings and things, and it's just not giving me the greatest of quality. Now, mind you, these particular models were scanned models, and I have discovered that depending on the quality of the scanning, that does affect, obviously, the quality of the uh, vital product that you print. So I'll have to try those filaments on other things that I know are, are you know tried and true that they print out well and see how that works. So I haven't given up on those ones particularly, but I have given up on this one that's rainbow. And the other thing that I created, and I'm really thrilled with that, is this. Now this was with one of those new filaments and it printed pretty good. And this was a scanned object as well. And I made another pincushion. It's a running shoe. I thought it was really cute. Um, the first one I printed out was much smaller than this. I had to blow this one up. And yeah, and it's sitting next to my sewing machine because I really think it's cute. Uh, so for, you know, masculine sewers, for men sewers, this would be a great little gift or whatever. But you know, I'm obsessed with making pin cushions in the 3D printer. So that's what I've been doing with the 3D printer and more to come. Now I have been commissioned, well, not really commissioned, but a friend of mine who's moving into a new apartment asked me if I could print him a flatware drawer insert. Now my first reaction to that was, well, no, I can't because those are bigger than what I can print on my 3D printer bed. But then I went looking searching for models and I found one that looks like it might work. Uh, it definitely will fill the bed of my printer but I think it might be fine for what for his purposes. So I'm going to try later today I'm going to get things set up I'm going to try to print it and see what kind of luck I'll have with that. I've warned him that this may or may not work so be prepared. And that's the thing with 3D printing and there are probably those of you out there that got a 3D, 3D printer for Christmas, I'm going to tell you right now, and you've heard me say this before, they are not plug and play. There is a learning curve. And even after you've gotten over the learning curve or think you've got over the learning curve, be prepared for a lot of failures. I would say out of every five prints I do, two out of five basically fail the first time I print them. And then you got to do some tinkering with both your equipment and the software with it. So look at 3D printing not as a, a means to an end in terms of making useful products. Look at it as a learning experience that's challenging your brain and is, you know, allowing you to become creative as well that really it isn't it's the journey it really is the journey uh, and if the final product turns out great great 
but it's the journey more so than the end uh, destination when it comes to 3D printing. Okay, so that's all that's new. That's all that I've been doing there. So let's go to a blast from the past. As I said, I wish I was in Australia right now, but I'm not. So the next best thing is a video from my trips. So here's one. I call it Brisbane the Burbs. When uh, we were there uh, in April, this is from April the 8th, 2019. This will be a two-part video. This will be the first part this week uh, because it was a little bit lengthier. But it shows you, you know, where the real people live in Brisbane. Their life kind of a thing. So I'll insert that here. Here, lizard, 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 lizard. Where? Where? One's over there. Oh, yeah. So we're on our way to the Science Center, but on the way there, we came across a couple of lizards, as you can see. Definitely something we don't see in our country. Okay, so we're on our way to the Science Center, and we did pass several large groups of children because it's a holiday, school holiday here for up until Easter, I think. Um, we might luck lucked out, though. They may not be in here, or they're already in there, and, well, whatever. Probably, Probably. I'm sure. How can we avoid them? But, you know, we'll see. Giant layout. Okay, so, we talked to the guy at the concession stand for tickets. I guess there's a couple of special exhibitions here you pay for, but the rest of this is pretty much free. The other two exhibitions don't, they sound more like they're family oriented, sort of. Lots of interactive things for kids to do. He said to come up to the fourth floor first. It's, he said it before the crowds get up here. And this has got dead things on it. A lot of things here, dead things. There are dead things up here. <laughs> so dead birds and things. There's dinosaurs down one level somewhere too. So we'll see what we see. So coral reef. Much more colorful here than what we saw. It's a killer whale head. Job. Yeah. Job. Large sea turtle. Yeah, I know. What was that? The Australian zoo where we saw it, wasn't it? No, that's not a kookaburra, is it? No, 201, it's a 
something frog mouth. Okay. Well, we saw one in another place, and I called it a kookaburra because that's what it looked like. Oh, yeah, it's not. Oh, there's a lizard. Except that one's stuffed. Oh, uh, French bird. Australian king parrot. King parrot. What's this thing? Um, oh wait, it's a month in this world. It's a Bennett's tree kangaroo. Oh. They're both tree kangaroos. Oh, they're so fluffy. You look at that face. And that thing. Uh, uh, possum. Possum Different from the possums we have. Those ones are kind of cute. Our possums are as ugly as sin and mean. They might be mean too. It's a hairy nosed wombat. 357. One of yes. Hairy nosed wombat. And that's a by the nail tail wallaby. It's a danger. That's why they stuff them. Oh, they have a koala is in here, stuffed one with a baby. It's kind of cruel. Oh, here we go. Here's our favorite. No, There's, I don't think that's a... It says fruit bats. Where's it? 337. That's fruit bats. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Look at the face. More bats. Can't get enough bats. The only thing we saw alive pretty much was that. Yeah. The dango ate your baby.
That's a cane toad too. Yeah, I know. That's why I said this. Those suckers get big. I see that. I got it. I think I got it. Where is it? No, I got it. You're too low. I'm higher. There. Oh, there he is. Okay. Yeah, it's speckled flying frogs, that's it. The go with dead wings.
guess this is an interactive area for kids. Well, we're kind of outside. takes me to events in the past week and another special event that we had was our anniversary of Walters and my uh when we first met and our anniversary and this is the anniversary we consider the real anniversary uh it's the one that's more important to us than the anniversary of our wedding anniversary which come next July will be 17 years um but this anniversary was our 38th anniversary 38 years We've been together. Someone asked me yesterday, what do we attribute our longevity to? And it, that was a hard question to answer. It just works. It just works. Uh, we're enough alike that, you know, we don't usually run into any major conflicts or when we make decisions about things that will affect our lives. But we're enough different that it keeps things interesting. And we do have open channels of communication with each other. Um, and that's always helped. And over time, in a long-term relationship, you have to learn tolerance. And you have to learn it's not all about you. And you have to be willing to um, uh, compromise. It's not that hard. You know, basically, I sum it up this way. When I, if Walter and I do disagree about something, or I know he's not going to see eye to eye with me, on something i say to myself pick the mountain you want to die on in other words if is it really that important is it really going to make a difference or are you just letting your ego get in the way and you're becoming stubborn and you know i have found over the years that that has worked for me and don't sweat the little things you know you can't change a person's personality. You can't. Uh, and so many people in a relationship try to do that. They try to mold the other person into something that that other person can never become. Just accept it. Pick the mountain. And, you know, in the big scheme of things, if they leave their underwear on the floor, is that really that bad? If... You know, maybe they leave crumbs on the counter. Is that really going to change the price of rice in China? No, it's not really going to go and do that. So don't sweat the little things. It's not worth it. And at least that's my philosophy and it's worked for us. And so we're at 38 years. Yeah. In gay terms, that's a million. Yeah. Okay. And so we had that. And so what did we do on our 30th anniversary? We had a really lovely evening. At least I thought it was. We didn't go out well. Yeah, like as if we could. No. Um, but over the last few years, anyways, we've just, we've we've kind of stopped going out and having spending a lot of money on a really fancy dinner because, you know, it's not really worth it. Um, we stayed home. We'd, we had bought frozen lobster tails from Costco and we did those we did a little we, we sort of had a, a progressive little dinner like sort of we we didn't rush it we did some champagne and a little bit of charcuterie um and, and before that and then and Walter threw the lobster tails into the sous vide and when those were done and we were ready for it, we took those out and we had a little butter with them and that kind of thing. And some nice, we bought a loaf of uh, really nice artisan bread for that and had another bottle of wine, a nice red wine. Yeah, I know we were eating seafood. It should have been white, but we don't follow the rules. Um, and uh, we just took our time, ate, talked. It was a very, very nice evening. And um, the lobster tails were fantastic. In fact, we tried to get another bag of them for future at Costco and they were sold out. 
So if I ever see those again, we're going to nab them. We got five lobster tails, two really large ones and, a, and three slightly smaller, but it was enough. It was a lot of lobster. It really was. It was enough for us. That was for sure. But you know, I could have just been a glutton and eaten another bag of them because they were that good. And uh, for 30 bucks, like couldn't really beat the price. Um, and yeah, some of you will poo poo it and go, well, they weren't fresh. They were frozen. Well, <laughs> I live in Ontario. We're not known for lobster. Okay. Um, but they were, they were really, really good. So next time we see some of those, we're going to nail some more for sure. But anyways, it was an, a lovely evening. So 38 years and we haven't killed each other yet. So I made a little video of what our evening was like celebrating our anniversary. And I'm going to put that in here right now. We're not exactly dressed for the occasion. Well, we're eating in. Tonight's a special night. This is our 38th anniversary. And uh, we're ha starting the evening with a little champagne, as you can see. And we're just waiting for the brie to warm up, warm brie, in the oven. And, uh, I don't know why you keep calling it brie, it's caviar. All right, whatever. <laughs> They're both, the, what, never mind. And uh, so that's what we're having. And then uh, later on, Walter's got the sous vide out because we're doing lobster tails in the sous vide with um, possibly a wedge salad, keeping it somewhat light. And oh, we still have to melt the butter. Yeah, well, I can do that later. A little butter as well. So that's how we're celebrating our anniversary. No flowers, no chocolate, <laughs> nothing. After 38 years, what do you get? Cheap champagne. It's not even champagne. <laughs> well, I got extra for Christmas. Oh, I got extra for Christmas. This is a bottle of Frisene, which is a sparkling white wine. It's not officially champagne because I guess you can't call it champagne unless it comes from Champagne, France. And yes, we're both wearing our tuxes, as you can <laughs> see. And uh, yeah, so we'll show you the other parts of the dinner when we get to Okay, it. so here's the warmed brie out of the oven which um, we left it in a little long, so it's more like brie soup uh, with it. The other stuff that's bubbling away there is the laced blackcurrant jam, laced with an ice wine concoction. And, uh, oh well, this will burn the lips off us. Okay, so I kind of forgot to videotape the salad. It was a wedge. Um, but these are the lobster tails, and we have our it's really not drawn butter, it's just melted butter. I mean, if we were in a fancy restaurant, it, it would be drawn butter. What's drawn butter? Isn't that when they take the fat off it? It's off the, the uh, what do you it's call clear, it? Clarified, clarified, clarified it's almost butter. almost clarified though. It's kind of like ghee in Indian food, but yeah, it's almost, but not quite. And some lemon slices and some bread not made by us, bought at a gourmet grocery store, I guess, or like that um and we're still drinking we're now we're on to red wine and everything but anyways yeah that's the anniversary dinner and what else happened the last week well of course christmas day what did we do christmas day well the plans changed a lot originally we were supposed to go over to my sisters now at that point i thought it was just going to be my sister my brother-in-law and my nephew and my niece and Walter and I. Then I found out that she was also having her in-laws, her mother-in-law and father-in-law. And they're older. They're in their 80s, uh, early 80s, both in good health and whatnot. But then that added a new environment. Of course, all of us, including them, have been double vaxxed. Walter and I have been triple vaxxed um, as well. We got the booster. And my sister is getting the booster this week and her and her husband and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, we weren't too particularly worried about that. But then it grew again because now the group was going to include uh, my brother-in-law's sister, her husband, and her two kids, which are adults. But one of her kids has a boyfriend that she lives with in an, another town. So that was putting us up to 13. Well, right there, we're already over the number recommended by the government. We should have only 10. Now, again, everybody in that new group coming in, we're all double vaxxed. But now what you're doing is you're bringing in 
four, five different households. And although everybody's being cautious and all that kind of stuff, they still come into contact. We all come into contact with other people, you know, when we go grocery shopping or something like that. You know, yes, we're doing the mask thing and the whole bit. But now it's getting a little worrisome. And I said to Walter, I'm not really sure about this. This is getting a little bit too complicated. Plus, my sister has a small house in the area. So it's not like we're all going to be able to distance ourselves that far apart. But then there was a new wrinkle in this. Her, my sister's mother-in-law and her sister-in-law, they thought that what we should do is get some rapid test kits. And on Christmas Day, before we all came together, everybody do a rapid test just to make double sure. So, okay. So we got the tests and we were going to do this. But then <laughs> another wrinkle. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm saying to Walter, I don't think, I, I don't think this is a good idea. Even when we do the test and the whole bit, you're always going to be a little uptight. I mean, I, you know, you could be asymptomatic. The test might not show that. I don't want to be a carrier of this disease and give it to like my sister's in-laws because, you know, their health, although good, is still a little bit more fragile. So, you know, I'd be always... I'd be spending all my time being go more concerned about that kind of thing than really enjoying myself. But the decision, and I was getting to the point of making the decision, going to say to my sister, look, sorry, you know, thanks for the invite and the whole bit, but we just feel that this would not be a good thing to do. Didn't have to do that because the daughter to, this gets complicated. I need to draw you a diagram. The daughter to the sister of my brother-in-law who lives in another town with her boyfriend the boyfriend tested positive for covid i think he's okay he doesn't have it very severe but nevertheless they're quarantining so they're not coming and then that just right there it made the decision my sister said we're not doing this this is not worth it so we didn't on Christmas Eve, actually the afternoon of Christmas Eve, we went over to her place, dropped off gifts that I'd made for them and for the kids and everything like that. We did the same with Walter's side of the family, you know, out on their porch kind of a thing, away from them. And we had Christmas Day to ourselves, which was the same as last year. Now, we tried to make it a little bit more festive. Uh, we had a turkey roll. We actually have a full-size turkey sitting in our fridge, freezer that we bought way back because, you know, there's going to be a turkey shortage and the price was going to go out the roof or something like that. I don't know if that happened or not, but we got our turkey early and it's frozen and there it sits in the freezer because at that point in time, we didn't know what Christmas was going to look like. We didn't know if we were going to have people here or not. So we were prepared, but nevertheless, two of us and a big turkey. No, we've eaten turkey till July and I do like turkey, but I don't want to eat it till July. So we got a turkey roll and uh, we did that. I did some scalloped potatoes and um, yeah, it was actually pretty good. I did the dinner table up as well. Um, and I'll just throw in a little picture here to show you what I'm talking about. So there was our table. I thought I'd make it a little bit more festive. Usually when we sit at the kitchen table, it's just a couple of placemats. But I thought I'd put in this little centerpiece thing and, uh, you know, we got out the better dishes and that whole bit just to make it a little bit more festive. And so that's what we did. And it was fine. Um, not as nice as being with family uh, for Christmas, but, you know, maybe next year. We all say that, don't we? Maybe next year. Now, I do have a little video to show you. Uh the whole process of, of Christmas dinner, what we cooked. F so I'm going to insert that right here. Okay, so Walter has been madly working in the kitchen, getting together our Christmas dinner. And what are we featuring? Well, we're going to have one of these. That's a boneless turkey breast, which basically is a turkey roll. 
and I think it's bits and pieces all compressed together. We've had them before, this one's okay. It isn't stuffed though, um, so he's got to make some stuffing yet. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's, it comes out frozen. It looks almost like a ham. But that yeah. has to go in the oven for three and a half to four hours. It's frozen. Cook from frozen. Cook Probably from. because it'll fall apart if you don't cook it. <laughs> it. So, yeah, when there's only two of us, it doesn't make any sense to do a full turkey. Although we do have a full turkey sitting in our freezer. Maybe New Year's. I don't know. So, uh, no. over here, I did make this morning scalloped potatoes au gratin. Um, and you're probably wondering, why are they that color? Well, so am I. But that's basically the cheese that's on top of it. And um, I think it'll be fine. It might be a little crisp. But for some reason, my cheese, I, I didn't cover it when I first put it in because I don't usually. I usually wait until halfway through the cooking process to cover it. But this time, it kind of went up real quick. <laughs> so, But I think it'll taste fine. Um, anyways, so that's the scalloped potatoes. We do have just doing some green beans as our veggie uh, with it and as I said stuffing and that's the Christmas dinner as far as the main course is concerned and, and some fresh bread oh yes fresh bread Walter's making fresh bread and where is it in the oven at the moment no 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 it is resting so that it'll oh it's resting co uh, comfortably where is yes. it resting in the bathroom because that's the warmest room in the house <laughs> <laughs> why did you fart <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, well, okay, uh, our bread is resting in the bathroom. All right. And, um, yeah, so that's what we have planned. I have the t table already set, as you can see. And uh, it's a few hours yet before Din Din's, um, because as I videotape this right now, or video record it, um, it's quarter to three in the afternoon, and in 15 minutes we have a Zoom call with my sister and her family since we're not all getting together for Christmas and yeah we've got Christmas goodies over here and uh, this is stuff I bought a few weeks ago and froze from the Dutch bakery some mince tarts and some cookies and some rum balls and some Christmas cake or fruit cake whichever you like to call it I know a lot of people don't like fruit cake but I love fruit cake and uh, I do too but not that kind <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are what you eat. That's what they say. Um, yeah, so everything is coming together. Um, a little weird, there's just two of us. But then again, it was just two of us last year too. So <laughs> it's becoming the norm, I guess. Oh, and I do have a little cheese board with some little appetizers for when we meet up with my sister on Zoom. We're going to have that. We're we going to have the drink. I don't know. We can have a beer or beer. we can have something else. Maybe we can try one of our Advent beers from that box, the ones with the weird flavors. We have wine for dinner and things like that. So, yeah, I'll show you what the end result of all this is, if I remember to, uh, later on. Okay, so Christmas dinner is all cooked, and here it is. This is the turkey roll, and then we have the stuffing. And it's the secret old family recipe. It's called Stuff and Such with added things. Walter always puts little chopped up goodies into it as well. My famous brown scalloped potatoes. We'll see what those are like. And just green beans and gravy. And of course we have Only some bread. wine. Oh, where's the bread? Well, the bread's over there. But... Oh, bread's on the table. Hold up your bread. Homemade cheese Cheese bread. Cheese bread. Ooh, very cheesy. Very cheesy. So that's what we're having for dinner tonight. Now, speaking of cooking, if you want a screen, we were going through some of our old videos the other day, and I came across one I forgot I had made where I was showing myself trying to cook Dutch pancakes, which are a little different. They're kind of a cross between a regular pancake and a crepe. It was not meant to be funny, but when I saw this again, it's hilarious because it didn't work what I was doing. So if you want a laugh, I've put the link to that video in the show notes. Check it out because, yeah, it is very, very funny. 
Okay, so that takes us to what's coming up. Well, of course, we have New Year's Eve, and we don't have any plans for that. Um, probably we'll do what we did last year, have dinner. I've got another bottle of champagne. We may have some champagne. Um, I don't know what we'll have for dinner. We'll figure out what we're making. And uh, we'll probably go on to YouTube and watch uh, fireworks from around the world. We'll probably start with Australia's display because it's always absolutely fantastic. And I have seen it live as well. Yes, one of our trips to Australia, we went at Christmas time and had a really great time at the Sydney Opera House. That night it cost us an arm and a leg, but it was wonderful. And that's where we saw the fireworks uh, from the Sydney Opera House. That's a memory that I will always have. One of my best memories. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll work our way across uh, Europe and to whatever we have here in Canada uh, as well. The beauty of YouTube is, you know, you don't have to wait, <laughs> you know, because, yeah, you can see it all on YouTube. Um, so that's probably what we'll do and go to bed. <laughs> uh, or I will. Walter will be up till three in the morning. I'll be lucky if I can stay awake till midnight. I don't even know if I want to. Anyways, yeah, that's, that's plans for New Year's. And what else is coming up? Well, not much. Just another reminder about Craft and Chat. That's coming up. Links in the show notes. And uh, yeah, so I want to wish you uh, a very happy New Year's Eve and a happy New Year. And let's hope that the new year coming is going to be a much more positive year that we finally will get through this thing. Let us hope for that. That would be a great thing, wouldn't it? Okay, have a good one, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.